afternoon everyone hi this is samir um, i'm very excited to sort of begin this session in association with hem securities one of the leaders in the very main topic of today's which is basically about sme ipo listing so today's agenda is really a very interesting one and in the current market status and the market situation it will be very interesting to hear the experts gaurav and navin talk about it uh, from hem securities uh in terms of what is the method what are the smes what are the selection criteria what are the myths about ipo listing and some of the interesting insights that i'm sure that they will have that they will share with us which will throw light on how is that you can unlock the valuation of your company in a faster better way and and that is something that is uh, that is that we want to share with you today and um, i i welcome gaurav i welcome navin um, on behalf of the foundation and advantage program here uh, thanks for joining us gaurav and samit navin so we'll start uh, with something which is the sme ipo it's uh, just to give you a reference so this is a new platform that was created almost 10 years back in 2012 uh, sip we started uh, a new division which was called as sme platform on bse as well as nsc whereby everything remains same bombay stock exchange and national stock exchange created new new uh, they divided their entire platform into two the earlier is now called as main board and the smaller version is called as the sme platform in that growing companies are getting listed in last 10 years time we have seen almost 600 700 companies have uh, listed on this particular platform uh very recently yesterday bsc celebrated their 400 listing uh with 60000 crores of market cap on the segment and then combined uh, in case if we combine bsc as well as nsc we have 90000 crores of market capitalization what that means 90000 crores of new money has been created by only 600 700 companies in india we have larger number of msmes 4 4 and a half crores msc msmes are present in case if few thousand list these this number of almost 90000 crore can be maybe 9 lakh crores just to give you a perspective the sme platform in india is less than 1% of total market capitalization of the main exchange this slide says earlier the average size of ipo in 2012 it was around 9 and a half crores which has doubled So this is the average size uh, of an SME IPO that's in India. So we would see a five crore IPO also. We will also see a fifty crore IPO. This slide states the SME IPOs versus main board. Main board is the main exchange uh, that was prevalent for last one forty years. So in case if you try to look at two thousand twenty two, for example, sixteen IPOs came on the main exchange, or rather forty seven fifty IPOs came on the SME board. for the very same reason india is an sme nation large number of companies are available on uh, as msme so that's the reason this number is continuously increasing some statistics 650 companies approximately have been listed these companies uh, migrate to the main exchange in two years time uh, so 250 companies have already got migrated 8200 crores of funds have been already raised and 90000 crore is the overall market capitalization all sort of sectors uh, we have seen you name it and then that that sector would be listed on the sme exchange largest uh, sector uh, sorry largest state that's contributing uh, here is maharashtra and gujarat so this slide is very important jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai that is the theory in case if you are unlisted you are among this 6.3 crore msmes out of that only a very limited are listed 644 is the msmes that are listed in india in case if you are listed then at least you become visible out of the large uh, segment of 6.4 crores whereby even though somebody would like to pick you for investment it's very difficult to even find it's more about getting visible so that somebody can evaluate you for investments what are the benefits very importantly visibility your uh, even your banking uh, facilities improves because even at the branch level in case if you are a listed company the powers at branch level are more and because you are a listed company your credit rating improves so that that we have seen many cases we have seen 25 basis point to 50 basis point interest rate getting reduced 
in case if you are listed then there are other mediums uh, through which you can raise funds there are institutional placements uh, there are investments through fdis and everything that also becomes doable uh, the most important benefit is substantial increase in valuation that is what we called as market capitalization also in case if banks require collaterals so you list your company a value is being created by uh, by having a share price so even we have seen promoters have pledged their shares in the banks for a value and then take an actual money so even these collaterals get gets created ek energy got listed uh, at a market capitalization of about 1000 crores april 2021 7th of april if i may remember and uh, that one company went on to become the india's first sme ipo based unicorn in the whole plethora of unicorns that we had in the startup fraternity last year uh, the first sme uh, unicorn that came from the platform was ekia energy now what it all did uh, after listing and the and it was very uh, great uh, boost by the promoters themselves immediately after listing with the new found glory that the company has got and obviously the money that they raised for uh, growing their company they went on and immediately acquired a couple of businesses one in africa one in dubai which kind of changed their perspective completely from an indian company to a global company they were growing by leaps and bounds what was their net turnover for the year prior to listing became their quarter profit immediately after listing by the way of new acquisitions and operations now this kind of growth got visible by international funds and obviously there was a new found of interest uh, by various uh, marquee investors across the globe and that's what resulted in uh, shell coming in and investing about 1.2 billion dollars in the month of december in ekia energy so these companies started with maybe a 50 crores 100 crores worth valuation a 5 10 20 25 crore ipo but in next One two years time, three years, four years time, these companies have reached to a seven hundred crores to five thousand crores of valuation. So these are top fifteen companies on the SME platform, whereby they started at quite low valuation, but the valuation rose like anything. Few of the promoters from these lists are also now counted among top top thousand richest Indians by only one particular thing: you got their company, they got their company listed, profits were rising, turnover were rising. and because you were listed uh, an equity valuation was given to these company shares and that's how valuations are being created so ek energy services they got their company listed a uh, 20 crore ipo 80 crore valuation today is valued at 4000 crore in case if the promoter holds 75% in the same so it makes almost 2500 to 3000 crore 1000 crore as per the latest data available in case if you have 1000 crores of net worth that then you are among top 1000 richest indians so there are large number of uh, promoters that created wealth for themselves for their shareholder and by just virtue of getting listed their company on the sme platform uh, growth in profits led to they uh, create value for their equity in case we go by academics then you should have at least 3 years of track record you should be uh, doing business for last 3 years time your paid up capital should not be more than 25 crores you should have a positive net worth and the cash accruals in last 2 years should also be positive so merchant banker is appointed he would look at the various uh, structuring capital structuring uh, he look at that in terms of in terms of due diligence concerned we look at last three years financial statements whereby we see whether all the all the expenses and everything are properly recorded and uh, properly grouped we talk about uh, various company secretary related work so in most of the private companies all the registers all the uh, all the minutes of various board meetings everything are not being kept so we try to get all these things done and everything uh, legal due diligence is being done whereby all the cases done by the company on the company uh, any legal cases by the promoters or on the promoter it is disclosed so importance is disclosure happening of that legal event is not important disclosing why because you are you are listing the company it is important that whatsoever that uh, is there the public investor should know and then he is taking his conscious call to invest into your company 
so the usually procedure is for 3 to 4 uh, 3 to 5 months time whereby in initially one one and a half month time two months time will uh, will list the uh, will uh, complete the entire applications and everything uh, will compile all documents uh, all documentation work and everything is being done then we file the application to the exchange 15 20 days time we get the approval then we do the marketing road shows are being done and then we open the ipo common apprehensions so to, i should list today or we should list after maybe after couple of years time once we grow uh, even sometime people feel that even i am talking about my equity valuation because profits are not there on the books and everything but I, my land value is that or my overall property value uh, is much more uh, there may be some sort of interference by public shareholder uh, there can be regulatory uh, intervention and all these things uh, uh, are the common apprehension so what what is important is to understand the best of companies globally are listed you name maybe an apple of the world samsung of the world tesla reliance infosys anyone so all these companies whatsoever doubts that you have they had more they they have more reasons to secure secure the information uh, all these companies this is the global proven formula of creating value listing is what every companies globally have done what you have to do these companies have chosen to create value worth lakhs of crores as of now we are thinking hundreds of thousands of crores but the but the formula is same when you should do it the sooner you do the faster we start creating our uh, presence in market people start watching us after couple of years time more investments come in because you create a track record all valuations in terms of land machines and everything they would become much lesser over a period of time because equity valuation moves at a much 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 faster pace in terms of interference of public shareholder the reason i mentioned maybe an apple or tesla they have far more confidential information so nothing of that sort usually happens largely at a listed level you would uh, it's more about prudent so suppose take an example maybe a, maybe a covid in case if your factory is closed then you have to inform that yes my factory is closed so at macro level you have to inform public otherwise we have largely not seen uh, interference by public shareholders even compliances are quite quite less you instead of every quarter reporting you just have quarterly reporting september ending you have to create uh, you have to give results uh, in terms of board meetings are concerned so even even as a private company you are required to do board meeting every quarter but we generally don't do it we do it backdated so you do it in that particular quarter you need to have a company secretary on payroll you even uh, so that's another thing that you need to have a company secretary on payroll in case if you are listed you even there are lesser compliances you don't have to send annual reports uh, like advertisement into newspaper and everything for financial and all those things are concerned that is even not required so simply give results in 6 months that to not fully audited peer reviewed you need to have a company secretary do board meeting in the required time frame the companies act the new companies act 95% of things are same for a private company and a public company because we are a private company sometimes we don't follow it religiously so we have to look into it that's the that's the whole idea uh largely what we have seen or even as same securities we would have uh, we would have listed almost 74 companies not even single company in last year 10 years have come to us stating that compliance has increased also we need to understand in case if our network your share capital plus reserves is suppose take an example maybe 30 crores you are 100% owner of that every year maybe you are making against a turnover of 50 crores you are making 2 to 3 crores profits and everything or that's was in the balance sheet so now in case if you say if you or see that that 3 4 crores can move to a 10 crore 15 crore or more a 10 multiple can give you 100 150 crore worth valuation and 75% because 25% is the issue size that you yeah, that you have to come up with 75% of of 100 crores or 150 crore is much more than 100% of just the net worth what we have
you choose in case if you are an sme you have to grow you try creating in another platform whereby money can be raised so that you can maybe you can repay loan faster maybe you can uh, grow you can do some sort of capex and you try you try to create an ecosystem for your company whereby in case if possible then money can be raised apart from traditional formulas like your own money banking money maybe by your friends maybe by anyone else it's more about that what sort of company actually would get funding those companies that can multi fold your balance sheet is clean healthy uh, sector is interesting you are growing at a uh, you can grow you have a conviction that yes you can grow uh, then yes there are people who are ready to bank you in case if you can multi fold so that's an excellent concept and uh, uh, large number of companies are now approaching uh, the sme platform to list and uh, large and most of these companies we have seen uh, the vision of promoters also changes once they become listed and what benefits would uh, it not bring along if you are a 250 crore net worth company a market cap company and you still own about 70 75% of that as a promoter this additional wealth created in your business can be utilized for further uh, you know raising capitals in form of debt in form of collaterals with the bankers as a listed company the bankers are looking at you in a new found light as a most compliant business your employees look at you as a company which is very transparent your suppliers your vendors and even your buyers they perceive you as one of the leading companies in the sector by being virtue of a listed company these are the various benefits that we get from it we should be having at least 3 years of existence that is what is required uh the net worth of the company should be positive uh, you should not, you cannot list your business if you are a net worth negative company the debt equity ratio has to be favorable if it is a very debt heavy company obviously investors don't uh, show that much interest fundraising is not a challenge if the company is progressive enough if the company is profitable at least one out of the last 3 years if it is net worth positive not too much debt as samir said right now too much of debt would obviously dent your debt uh, you know uh, interest serviceability quotient the profits are limited the heavy debt would obviously spiral the uh, growth prospects of the company backwards that is where in the long perspective equity fundraising is the way to go as samir mentioned uh, that's what is the basic criteria for listing i'll i'll just uh, you know bust a few myths over here there is though there are separate exchanges for the smes to safeguard the interest of both the investors and the promoters who are listing onto the stock exchange uh, these both exchanges are subsets of the parent exchanges both the bse and the nse so yes your stocks will also be trading right along the biggies like tata like uh, raymonds like uh, reliance like infosys like the adani groups and and this is a great privilege and a pleasure to see your company's name uh, right amongst those same money control z business cnbc tv 18 everybody covers in fact we are running an ip uh, intellectual property at uh, cnbc awaaz where we are talking about sme corner a listed sme is speaking on cnbc awaaz every week uh, and and that's how the platform is being promoted as well so uh, there are three types of costs involved with an sme ipo irrespective of the issue size first is the fixed fee uh, that will include your exchange fees the cost of converting your company from a private limited to a public limited or a partnership firm to a, a public limited company the cost of uh, company secretary uh, you know drafting of prospectus filing it to the exchange seeking approvals the exchange fees and all others including the merchant banking fees so that could come around uh, you know a ballpark figure of 35 40 lakh rupees uh, including the third party expenses plus there is a mandatory um, market making exercise that is officially allowed onto the smaller exchanges this is for two reasons one to maintain liquidity onto the separate exchange that has been created a merchant banker would on behalf of the promoter uh, put a market making buy and a sell call on the stock on a regular basis so that the prices are being you know 
taken towards the right uh, uh, stature and obviously the too much uh, buying or selling is being regulated over there so this would cost you about 5 to 6 lakh rupees on a annual basis plus certain uh, exchange cost that you'd have to pay on a year to year basis the exchange fee the software fees that would come around 3 to 4 lakh rupees more apart from this there is an average uh, fundraising cost of about 7% from marquee investors if you raise funds that is so for a typical ipo of about 10 to 15 cr the cost would go around 50 to 60 lakh rupees but this is a one time cost uh, i'm saying one time cost because this is the cost that uh, anybody would incur for a very long term horizon of a capital raise the first step obviously is to look for a merchant banker uh, uh, as the exchanges have mandated it very clearly that uh, as you require your chartered accountants to audit your books of accounts annually likewise if you want to go for an ipo you require to sign up a merchant banker a, a sebi registered category 1 merchant banker would be officially authorized to do that so hem securities is one of the leading merchant bankers in that space but having said that uh, uh, on a rightful note what is the first thing that is required to list for uh, you know uh, you know prepare for a listing of an ipo is to decide whether i should list my business the decision to grow or the decision to be unique or the decision to be a cut above the rest is something that would uh, separate somebody from a normal sme to a somebody who is listed on the stock exchange the upfront out of pocket expenditure is around 20 22 lakh rupees uh, that is uh, the cost that we pay to third parties and the initial mandate signing fee obviously uh, that is the out of pocket expenditure that an entrepreneur would do pre ipo and the all the remaining cost have to happen post funds have been raised so at the end of the day during the entire 3 3 and a half months of exercise that we do post uh, deciding to go ahead for an ipo till the date uh, you ring the bell on to the exchange uh, the out of pocket expenses will never exceed 20 20 lakh rupees you know companies that can think of growing multifold okay are the right ones to think about listing if you are poised at a position from where you think if i raise my if i raise growth capital for my business right now and the capacity is there the intention is there and the market dynamics is there that my business can grow at least 3 to 5 times from here in the next 2 to 3 years then you are a absolutely right candidate for a listing okay if there is a stagnant performance post listing the listing euphoria will fade away in about a year or two's time and what will happen is your stock price will start trading at a slightly lower a uh, rate than what you've been listing and that's how people you know form a sentiment that this company is not performing that great of course there are certain ne- negative sectors that we usually avoid uh, trading is one sector that uh, something investors don't like much because they operate at a very safer thin margin right as we are all talking about numbers around pack so obviously trading is something that is unless it is in maybe about a 1000 1500 crores of levels a trading is something that is not a favorite for listing on the sme platform the listing multiple that you usually get is about 8 to 10 times of your pat which makes you a 50 60 cr of the market capitalization of the company as the number of years progress your profit increases from maybe about 4 cr to about 8 cr to 10 cr by the scale of business that you grow over period of times and as a factor of goodwill or trust that is built over the number of years you spent profitable onto the stock market your pe multiple increases your pe multiple grows from 10 to about 25 30 which is closer to your industry average so every sector by virtue of its uh, you know uh, profitability likability and uh, investment capabilities uh, has got different sectors uh, uh, a steel plant would be uh, listing at about 4 or 5 of a multiple a pharma company would be listing at about 8 these are of course not uh, the uh, you know fixed multiples they vary from uh, company to company and their growth potential so while we evaluate a company we look at the last 3 years performance 
okay and there's one more question in the chat box that is saying the valuation multiple calculate on the past average earning per share no it's not like that it is basis your last uh, audited uh, profits that you have shown so for the current year it would be what is whatever the profit is shown in march 2022 but of course the the growth story is determined from the last 3 years performance as to how the turnover and the profits have grown <coughs> right and accordingly a merchant banker would be comfortable uh, awarding you a pe multiple so that in case of an untoward incident of the issue not being successful as an underwriter whether he'd be confident enough to fulfill that uh, issue for you Thank you.